attitudes of people to what we have contributed. So you will see in the hands of wisdom and the stories of sacrifice when Shafiq take it down and look at them, is the contribution of Muslims, the British Muslims, in the First World War, in the past, and even now. Muslim community here in Manchester in the United Kingdom contribute towards the health service. For example, the health service would not exist properly effectively run if it wasn't for the minority the immigrants who came over here, in a sense, from that side. So that's one contribution. Then we have solicitors, barristers contributing to So we do a lot of work on tackling Islamophobia and hate crimes. So we work with the police service on that, in the mainstream. Because we cannot tackle Islamophobia or anything on our own. We can't do that on our own. We have to work with others. So the Greater Manchester Police Service and other staff, we've got programs. So this bring lots of people together, which is for for me as an artist, it's very important. People talk with each other, interact with each other. So from that point, it, it's it's an excellent place. Everybody comes together in a way that they don't normally. It's a great community centre, and it's a very positive feeling, and it's inspiring. On a wider scale, the centre activities through partnerships will also further economic impacts and jobs linking up with local community projects and local government The project is unique. It's unlike any other project in this country or indeed any other project in Europe or the United States because it is a national project. It's a Muslim centre. It's a national centre. It's a British centre. Jesus, who believed in all these prophets. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim if he doesn't believe in these prophets and doesn't believe in Jesus. So we believe that these prophets were not divine, they were human beings, and they were sent with the task to convey the message of God for the guidance of mankind. And then we believe that God sent the final prophet, which is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who came after Prophet Jesus, approximately 600 years after Prophet Jesus. And even the Gospel, the final revelation, the final testament, which is the Quran. And as Muslims, what we believe is, God sent that revelation for our history, for the guidance of mankind. So, for example, to Prophet Moses, he revealed the Torah. To Prophet David, he revealed the Psalms. To Prophet Jesus, he revealed the, the Gospel. So what happened as Muslims, we believe that after these prophets died and left this earth, later on, people started changing the revelation of God by adding verses in there, which were not part of the original revelation, or taking verses out of the original revelation. So today we don't have the original manuscripts of the, the, the Torah, or the Psalms, or the Gospel of Jesus. Well, so if someone wants to accept Islam or become a Muslim, all they have to do is recite this Shahada with belief, and they accept they become a Muslim. And the amazing thing is from the moment they accept Islam, all their past sins are wiped away from the day they were born. It's like a new, fresh-born baby. Salah, the second pillar of Islam is the prayer. So as Muslims, we're commanded to pray five times a day, facing the direction of Mecca. Just to give you a brief overview, 
Cleanliness is very important in the Islamic faith. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said half of faith is cleanliness. And before we pray, as Muslims, what do we do? We make ablution, like I mentioned earlier. So in the year 865, a Muslim invented by the name of Ar-Razi wrote the first ever recipe for soap. And when the Christian crusaders went to the Middle East, they saw soap for the first time. And they were amazed. So when they came back to Europe, they grabbed them, beat them up, and sent them to Medina empty-handed. The day before Prophet Muhammad was going to leave Mecca, he went to a person called Uthman bin Talha, who was the key holder of the Kaaba. He was a non-Muslim, an idol worshipper. And Prophet Muhammad asked him, can you please open up the Kaaba so I could go inside and pray. And very rudely and disrespectfully, he told Prophet Muhammad, you get lost. I'm not opening the door. In the world. The one thing that amazed me when I was doing this exhibition, and even King Charles was blown away by this, was this here. Approximately 1,250 years ago, the king of England, his name was King Offa Rex. So he had official coins made in gold as the official currency of this country with his name. As you can see, Offa Rex. And on the back of the coin, he had the Islamic yes. testimony of faith, the Shahada. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Which means there's nothing worthy of worship except one God, and Muhammad is the final prophet of God. So this was the official currency of England 1,250 years ago. And in the British Museum, they actually have the coins on display without algebra. Um, some of the instruments used in operations around the world this day were discovered by Muslims and invented by Muslims. The first hospital in the world was the Ahmed bin Salah Hospital in Egypt, where free medication, uh, free treatment to everyone, regardless of what religion they are. The camera. The first person to ever invent the camera was a Muslim by the name of Ibn Haytham. And the word camera, it actually comes from the Arabic word camera. And he also invented glasses as well, which I'm wearing, many people are wearing, which benefit. So this is just a brief highlight of some of the things that Muslims contributed to civilization around the world. So please feel free to have a look around. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me. Thank you.